2-8, two variable inequalities. So in this section, we're going to talk about our objective is to graph two variable inequalities. So what this means is previously, we've done something that looks like this is greater than three. So nice, easy example. The way we would graph something like that, subtract two for both sides, get x by itself, we could have x is greater than one. Then we would graph it. We'd make a number line, negative one, negative two, right? We would then put an open circle around one because the solution does not include one. And my shaded region would go to the right. Now, remembering back that one is called the boundary point, and we are going to shade everything to the right of the boundary point. Now, in this section, we're gonna throw another variable in. So we're gonna be graphing two variable inequalities, something with an X, something with a Y. The way that we are going to do this is very similar to graphing a line, okay? And to continue there, the graph of a linear inequality contains all the point on one side of the line and may or may not include the points on the line. Just like this equation may or may not include the boundary point of one. So let's do a quick little warm up problem here. Let's think about this. You have a gift card for a store that sells pre-owned CDs and paperback books, even though nobody sells those anymore. You want to spend as much of the gift card as possible. How many of each item can you buy? Well, if we think about this, there are really a lot of different solutions to this. So let us set up a basic equation. Here are my prices, 525 for CDs, $3 for books. And we know that we wanna spend no more than 50 bucks because that's how much our gift card is, right? We can't go over it. So setting up a little formula, we have 525 times CD plus $3 times a book has to be less than or equal to my $50. And there's many, many, many different solutions to this equation. Not infinite because we are only going to use, can't buy half a CD or a quarter of a book, right? You have to buy a whole CD or a whole book. So there's not an infinite amount of solutions to this, but there are many, many and uh, quite possible to get lots of solutions. One of them could be something like eight. And if we buy eight CDs, that's going to be 525 times eight, which is 42 bucks plus. Um, well, if we have 40, if we have, if we've sold 42, or if we have, if we have 42 bucks so far, and we only can spend 50. That means we can only buy two books for six bucks and have a couple dollars left over, right? Two dollars left over. So that's one solution. There's a diff uh, there's many different solutions. We can plug any number we want in for that, any number we want in for that, as long as my uh, total is going to be less than 50. Okay, so that's what we're going to figure out with two variable inequalities. We're going to graph these things and we're going to figure out um, where the solution line is and what it looks like. So here's what we're going to do, right? We're going to start with linear inequalities. So a linear inequality in two variables is an inequality in two variables whose graph is a region of the coordinate plane. Okay, that's important. Okay, right? my answer is an actual region. It's not a point. It's not the line. It's a whole section of the graph. Okay, and this section of the graph is bounded by a line, and that line is called the boundary line, right? Or just the boundary of the graph. Okay? The boundary separates the coordinate plane into two half planes, okay? this half plane and this half plane right there. The part shaded in yellow is my answer, and the white is not part of my answer. Okay? And same thing over here. This would be the solutions to the inequality, this would not. All right. And the way we're going to figure out which half plane is part of my answer is we're going to pick something with a test point, okay? a test point that is not on the boundary. Okay? In order to figure this out, we are going to pick, use the origin point. Okay? 
that's usually an easy test point as not as long as it is not on the boundary. If it is on the boundary, we have to use something else. So if we were to pick the test point of 0, 0 right there, if we plugged it into whatever inequality we were trying to graph, this test point in this inequality would not work because it's not part of the solution. It's not in the shaded region. So because it's not, it doesn't work, that tells me that my shaded region does not include that. So it would go away from zero, zero. In this case, the opposite would be true. In this case, zero, zero would make the inequality true. So it is part of my answer. Okay, and we'll see what this looks like. Okay, so let's graph one of these things and see what it looks like. So here's my line. The easiest and best way to graph this, or here's my inequality, right? The easiest and best way to graph this is to put into slope intercept form and graph the line. Then figure out which way the region is going to go. So it is in slope intercept form. I have my intercept point, which is negative one. So we put a dot. Okay. I have my slope, which is 3, so that's up 3 over 1. And there we go. Now, notice the difference back here, that we have a dotted line and a solid line. Okay, Dotted lines happen when I have a greater than or less than. Solid lines happen when I have a less than or equal to or greater than or equal to. So back to my problem, I have a greater than inequality, so I'm going to put a dotted line. Okay. Okay. Now I have to figure out which way to shade. Do I shade this way or this way? Okay. There's a couple different ways to do it. First, I can pick my test point, zero, zero. It happens to not be on the boundary line happens to be a little bit above the boundary line, okay? So because it's not on the boundary line, I could pick this test point and figure out, does this inequality work with zero, zero as my point? So if I plug in zero, zero, that's zero for X, zero for Y, I would get an inequality zero is greater than three times zero minus one, three times zero is zero. Okay, which tells me that zero is greater than negative one. Zero is greater than negative one. So that means that zero, zero is part of my answer. And that means my answer goes this way. Okay, let's make this look pretty. Let's okay. so use some smart board magic to fill in my region. And I'll fix this in a minute. Okay, fill in my region with a nice blue color. Let's lighten it up a little bit so we can see through it. And there we go. All right. Let's clear this out. And redraw my boundary line. And there we go. So there's my graph. Okay. I have shaded region to the left, which is a little light, but we'll pick a darker color next time. My shaded region to the left, or also notice that it is above the boundary line, okay? That this region is above the boundary line if we look at the y-axis, okay? That's gonna help us in a minute. Let's try another one, okay? Let's look at this one, which is the same line, except now we have a less than or equal to. So let's see how this changes it. Still, my intercept is negative one. We, our slope is three, so up three over one. Now we're gonna do a solid line. All right, and now if I use my same boundary point of zero, zero, three times zero minus one, zero is less than or equal to zero minus one, zero is less than or equal to negative one. Zero is not less than or equal to negative one, so that means that zero, zero is not in my answer. It's not in my region, which means the region goes that way. Okay. So let's fill it in a little bit darker. So we can really see it. All right. And we'll just fill this in nice red. Okay. And 
let's clean it up with a nice lot. Okay. So that would be my answer. Okay. There we go. That would be my answer. The answer now, remember, is not the line. It's not the point. It is the entire region below the line, right? Also notice that my region goes below the line. And we're t uh, if we're looking at going up and down the y-axis, right? my region is below the line on the y-axis. Notice that that is ne less than, and this one is greater than. And my region here was above the line. Region here was below the line. So instead of using a test point, that's another little shortcut that we could use, right? We can inspect the inequality, solve for y, this only works if it's solve for y, to determine which half plane describes the solution. Since y describes vertical position, the solution of y is greater than mx plus b, will be above the boundary line, and the solution of y is less than mx, mx plus b, will be below the boundary line, okay? So a little shortcut there to help you out if you're trying to figure out which way to shade, up or down. Okay. Now, not only can we do this with two variable inequalities, but we can also graph two variable absolute value inequalities. Okay, and we can do this the same way that we did absolute value, or we did linear inequalities. Okay, we're going to put graphing absolute value equations and linear inequalities, we're going to put them together and we're going to graph things that look like this, okay? So, first things first, put it into standard form. Remembering that standard form look like this for an absolute value equation, plus k, all right? Where a was the stretch or compression. If there was a negative out front, that meant it was a reflection, okay? H is the x-coordinate of the vertex, K was the Y coordinate of the vertex. Okay? And notice that H is negative inside the equation. So let's first put in this, this in the standard form. So I'm going to first subtract one from both sides. So that leaves me with negative Y is less than X plus two. I don't subtract the one from inside the absolute value. Can't do that. I just leave it on the outside. Okay. Now I don't want negative Y. I just want Y. So I'm going to multiply everything by negative 1. Remembering, of course, the cardinal rule for multiplying inequalities by a negative 1 is that you must switch the inequality sign. Okay, don't, don't forget to multiply everything. There we go. Negative x plus 2 plus 1. Okay. So now that we have our inequality in standard form, I know a few things. I know my vertex. Okay. The vertex of this absolute value inequality is going to be negative 2, 1. Okay. Because this changes sign because, of course, it would be a minus, minus 2 to turn into a plus right, with my equation. A is going to be negative 1 because of that sign right there. Right. So now that we know those two things, I can graph this inequality. So first, plot my vertex. Negative 2, positive 1. Put a dot. Okay. Next, A represents the slope of the right-hand side of this inequality, which is negative 1, which means down 1, right 1. And notice that I am putting a dotted line because this is a greater than inequality and not a greater than or equal to. So once I have the right-hand line, I reverse the slope to a positive 1 and graph the other side. Okay. Now that I have my inequality graphed, I now have to decide what region to shade. Well, I can pick a test point, 0, 0. It's not on the line. Or I can realize that because this is a greater than inequality, that the boundary goes above the graph. Okay. So if I shade in everything above this line, I'm going to get this entire region Right there. Let's do it. And there we go. I can clean this up a little bit. 
and get a nice, got my vertex. There's my line that way. There's my line this way again. And now I can see my region. Okay, let's look at this one right here. All right. So what the answer to this one would be is the best way to do it is to solve for y. Add 2 to both sides. That gives me x plus 5 plus 2 is greater than or equal to y. Okay. But I want to reverse this. Okay. So I'm going to take these things and I'm going to put, whoops, I'm going to put y over here. And when I reverse the inequality, the inequality must, the inequality symbol still has to point towards y. So by reversing the equation, I also have to reverse the inequality sign. Right. So now that I'm looking at this, I see that my vertex is at negative 5, 2, and my slope is 1. So looking at these, I see that both of these, A and B, have a vertex of negative 5, positive 2. And Looking at this symbol, I can see that my graph goes below the line. So the answer is A. Okay. Just like we've done, just like we used transformations in previous lessons to help draw the boundary graph, okay, we can use them to write the inequality based on a graph. So if we see a graph, we can take this, we can use everything we know about a transformation of a parent function to turn this picture into an equation. How would we do that? First, we need the vertex, then we need a slope. My vertex is going to be 3, negative 2. The slope of the right-hand line represents A. Well, if we look, we're going to go up 1 over 1 to get to the line. So my slope is 1. Okay. Based on just this, I can write an inequality. Why? Okay. I want to use greater than or less than because this is a dotted line. And notice that it goes above the graph, so I want to say greater than. So y is greater than the absolute value, because it's a v, of x minus 3 minus 2. Right? A goes in the front, but A is 1, so we don't have to write that. Oops. Minus 3, minus 2, because we are going to shift this right 3, down 2. Okay. Let's try one more. Okay. So my vertex, notice this graph goes by 2s to not get too confused. So my vertex is negative 4 positive 3. Okay. The slope of the right-hand leg is, well, we're starting at 3 here. Right, let's pick some easier points here. Well, we have down 3, and it looks like we're going to go over 3. Down 3, over 3. So that's going to be, the slope is going to be negative 1. Okay. So with that, I can write y. I'm still going to use greater than or less than because it's a dotted line. And notice that it is above the line, so I'm going to use greater than again. Y is greater than ooh, my slope, negative x plus 4 plus 3. And that is how we make a right, that is how we write an inequality based on a graph. So that finishes up 2-8, two variable inequalities.